another uh, another one here. Um, has anybody been following Bitcoin? Yes. <laughs> they, uh, one of the one of one of the things I wanted you to wanted you to take a look at was uh, let's go over here to um, well let me let me show you uh, uh, one way to do this. Uh, one one way to find uh, uh, is you go to CoinDesk. Dot com if it works. <coughs> no, that's not it. I think it's spelled wrong there. You had a D in it. And you had D-E-F. Oh, it's not good. D-E-S. Yeah. Coindesk.com. This is one of the uh, one of the places that uh, where you can find the va price of, of uh, Bitcoin. And uh, this thing is taking so lo long to load. I was hoping we had a little faster s connection speed. Uh, and they have, first of all, uh, when you come to CoinDesk, they have some really good articles about Bitcoin. For instance, this one right here, Headwinds or Tailwinds, How U.S. Tax Reform Could Impact uh, Bitcoin's Price. So you, 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 uh, what I do is I read a lot of the articles here. What is Bitcoin right now? Just under three thousand dollars a coin. Look at this. See, the, the, this is twenty nine eighteen uh, right now. Uh, the price on Bitcoin, and uh, where was it? It was like three hundred a little bit <coughs> when we began covering it here in class. And uh, up here, um, the reason you, uh, one of the things you can do is on on this uh, website. This is for it comes up as one day. Now, if you look over here. This area, it says Ethereum, this says Bitcoin. You can check them both here. This is one day. We're going to look at it for one year. And you can see that this is what's happened over a period of a year. A year ago, it was down here at, what in the world? Why did that get way down there? <laughs> this, these two. These computers don't always uh, act the right way, uh, and 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 you can see what what's happening there. The uh, you have uh, and what what did I say? Uh, I said uh, last time we met, uh, we had just had this correction right here. We had this correction. I said this might be a buying time. You know what happens is every time you see a correction, it's going to be a good buying time. There appears to be a good buying time. Now. Bitcoin and Ethereum are a little bit different. They're digital currencies, they're called cryptocurrencies. Ethereum has data packets that are attached to the currency, and so it, it, you can have what they call contracts, small uh, digital contracts that are attached to the currency. And it allows the currency to be used in all kinds of different ways. And, uh, and you can see that uh, that Ethereum right now, let's uh, scroll, scroll this. No, that's still Bitcoin. It should be Ethereum. I clicked, I clicked on Ethereum. Ethereum. I thought we got it. I had it clicked. No, it's still coming up as Bitcoin over there. And here it is. We we you know two hundred and seventy-seven dollars uh, per coin. Uh, oh yeah, we can do Ethereum here. Have to click it on there too. So it's two hundred eighty dollars, two hundred eighty point nine three. Uh, Ethereum was six dollars a little while ago when we first began talking about it. So it's a two eighty. Uh, it has a lot further to go. Ethereum has the backing of all kinds of major uh, companies and people. Uh, the uh, significant people that would make a difference. So uh, uh, here's an article from CNBC.com. Bitcoin could hit $100,000 in 10 years, says the analyst who corrected called its $2,000 price. Uh, Bitcoin's price has the potential to hit over $100,000 in 10 years, which would mark a 3,483% rise from its recent record <coughs> high. An analyst who correctly predicted the cryptocurrencies rally this year told CNBC on Tuesday. In December, 
Saxo Bank published its annual report called Outrageous Predictions, with one of the <coughs> forecasts calling for Bitcoin to hit $2,000 in 2017. At the same time the note was published, Bitcoin was trading at around $754, so the target price represented a 165% rise. Bitcoin hit $2,000 on May 20th. But now Kay uh, Van Peterson, the analyst behind the call, is looking long term and sees a big uh, price rise ahead for Bitcoin and it's going, she's predicting it's going to go to $100,000 per coin. Ooh. Now I've said that, that it, that it could happen. Why, why do I say that? I say that because I see a crisis in fiat currencies. <coughs> and there's so much money in fiat currencies right now, which is what? Digital currencies. Such a small part is actual physical bills. Uh, it's a, it's, that's a very small percent. Almost all currency is in digital. It's in bank accounts. It's in the air. It's, 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 it's between your phone and a satellite in a bank. It's somewhere in the air sometimes <laughs> as it's being transferred. Right. So right now in the air, there's billions of dollars in the air. Talk about feeling of insecurity. <laughs> Talk about that. And, and people say, well, uh, can you can you trust uh, can you trust Bitcoin versus uh, the U.S. dollar? Well, I mean the uh, the U.S. dollar is based uh, on it's called fiat. Fiat means I said so. That is the government says so. They create a currency out of, uh, and of course they didn't start out creating currencies this way. They started creating real money. They started cut, creating silver and gold coinage that we uh, we all had. And then pretty soon it was paper money that was backed by silver and gold coinage or, or silver and gold bullion. And, and then they took that away <coughs> and they just said, we have this fiat currency and oh, by the way, we've got this pocket of gold over here, but they're really not associated, but kind of one supports the other. And that, that wouldn't create a demand for it. Uh, so what the United States government has to do to create a demand for the US dollar is they say, your taxes can only be paid in U.S. dollars. All of a sudden you create this massive demand for U.S. dollars. You must have them. They make a, they make a, uh, uh, put a demand that only the, the OPEC nations will only sell oil in U.S. dollars. That puts a demand on the U.S. dollar. You have to have U.S. dollars to do it. So there's a demand. So then uh, that increases the value of them because there's a demand for it. <coughs> when that demand goes away, uh, for instance, what if the government said uh, it's okay to uh, pay your taxes using Bitcoin? Some people are doing that now. I mean, the demand for the U.S. dollar would change. I mean, everything would change dramatically. So uh, how do you create a demand for the U.S. dollar? The typical way is you create a war. It's a normal way that the, the governments of the world uh, do it. You need a demand for your currency. Uh, where does everybody go in the time of war? They go to the U.S. dollar. It's the most secure form. Uh, you know, the, you know, the government's not defaulted on anything yet. Uh, you know, we, we, we got all these things, and so <coughs> you, you create a war. Why? Then everybody, I mean, people in Syria, are they putting their money in Syrian banks? No, they're not. They're not putting money in Syrian banks. Everybody's trying to get out of Syria. They're trying to get their money out of Afghanistan. They're trying to get their money out of uh, Iraq, whatever. Uh, they're trying to get their money out of Libya. Uh, and they're trying to get their money out of Greece. You know, they're trying to get their money out of Cyprus. These kinds of things. The people are trying to get their money out of all kinds of areas. Uh, uh, and, but right now, that's how you create a, a demand for U.S. dollars. Uh, you have perpetual war, and you create uncertainty and fear in the world, and that creates a demand for U.S. dollars right now, the way it is. That's uh, just, just the way, way it works. And so you'll find that if there's a dollar collapse, uh, the, almost the, always the answer is war. And what does that do? Stimulates the home economy. <coughs> Why? Because everybody who goes to war has their own armament companies. Uh, we don't buy our armaments from China or Russia. We have our own armament companies. And that, what does that do? That creates, if you have war, that creates jobs at home in the war industry for planes and tanks and whatever, bombs. 
napalm. Those are the th kinds of things that, uh, uh, that usually happen. So we watch for those things at, uh, at financial crisis times because they run in, in, uh, in, in parallel. Financial crisis and war run together, just automatically. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at uh, over here on, on Bitcoin, uh, they, uh, for the longest time, Bitcoin was the only cryptocurrency that we had. And this is Bitcoin as a, as a percent of the total cryptocurrency market. And, and for a long time, they were almost at 100%. And then 75% <coughs> of the market was always in Bitcoin. But now Bitcoin is only has 47.9% of the uh, crypto market. Uh, and so you can see there are additional cryptocurrencies coming onto the market. Even though Bitcoin is going up, uh, its percentage of the market is falling. So, so, so we have, there are multiple currencies being created right now. Yes. Will the SDR become a new cryptocurrency? Will the SDR become a new cryptocurrency? Absolutely. That's my, my belief uh, uh, that we, uh, uh, all the major banks that I know of are forming their own currencies. Nations are forming their own uh, currencies. Um, it might be called the dollar, it might be called something else. It might, might be called FedCoin. It might be called any number of different things. But this is where the, it's going. Uh, the, the one worlders have been pushing for a long time to have a one world currency and to have a digital currency. Yes, Rick. With the decline in Bitcoin market share, who's, what company is increasing market share the most? Well, Ethereum right now is, but we're going to, we're going to show you that, uh, we will show that right now. Let's do that. We'll go over here. And what we'll do is we're going to go up here. <coughs> The, bit, the, the, the coin universe keeps expanding. The, the, uh, uh, with the Bitcoin price up a stunning $2,000 over this time last year. So you can see, uh, we see so they show on this chart 2,500. It's right now at 3,000, right? We just below 3,000. You can see what, what's been going on, but what we, what we see here is that Coin, uh, Bitcoin uh, has, there's about, uh, well, let's say over 40 billion now with the price. Uh, and, and then uh, they have, uh, Litecoin is associated with Bitcoin. And uh, this is D-O-G-E. Dogecoin. Do Dogecoin, Dogecoin and Dash are all associated with, with Bitcoin. Then you have Ripple. It's a whole nother thing, and they have lumens, stellar lumens. <laughs> then you have uh, Ethereum. We have Ethereum, which we've been following, and then we have uh, what's called Ethereum Classic. This is where Ethereum made a change, uh, and uh, somebody, some, some of them stayed the old, and, and they're called Classic, and the, and the Ethereum that changed became the new, and they're the one that's been growing. So we, well, and then we have, uh, uh, there are 800 other alter alternative coins right now, wow. worth 6.1 billion. And, uh, and so you can kind of see, you can see the, there's Byte coin up here, and the um, Mo Monero is, is a part, part of it. And so what you see is all of these <coughs> coins coming, and, uh, and, they, and, and whether or not they have a demand for them. But what's happened is when you add these companies together, you take you take Ethereum and Ripple and Bitcoin. Uh, you're now you're now bigger than Ford and HP and Gap all com combined. You know. No, 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 not quite. Well, you're going by the number on here. Yes. I'm going by what it is today. Oh. <laughs> today, today it's because because this was based on $2,500 Bitcoin and now it's 3,000. So you could you could just see what's happened. Uh, they, they, and this is just getting started. This is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Why? Because fiat currencies are failing. And look for fiat mm -hmm. currencies to fail even more. Yes, Bill. Is there any cryptocurrency backed by gold? Yes. 
Yes, uh, there is. Uh, we covered that uh, in uh, maybe our last meeting. We have the uh, uh, the commodity comm commodities mercantile exchange, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, out of Chicago, uh, is uh, partnering with Royal uh, Mint of, Lo of of London, and they're creating their own gold uh, digital currency, similar to gold money or what we call Bitcoin. It's going to be a similar type program, but they're just getting started. They've got it up and running. They've got a, they aren't, are, aren't selling it yet. Uh, but we can expect <coughs> to see cryptocurrencies backed by copper, silver, zinc, lithium. That's it, all kinds of stuff. You're going to see this is where the marketplace is going. This is where it's all going and uh, you're going to see everything backed by blockchain. What does blockchain require? Lots of storage, because you're you're you you are you are putting on um, your information instead of being just held at your local bank uh, is now being held on tens of thousands of computers. Every transaction is held on tens of thousands of computers. And uh, so, what what what's a great place with this? You need uh, the uh, the uh, semiconductor, mm -hmm. data storage. All these these are th these are areas that are that have been booming are not going to continue to boom. Western <coughs> Digital, you know, hard make make of hard drives and, and all kinds of storage, memory storage. All of that is going to be even even more so because uh, as the whole world ch changes over to blockchain, and this is all happening. And so, if we can get our heads wrapped around it before most people do, and get ourselves situated and get in front of where everybody's going, that's where you, you can make the money. Now, uh, the, are there Bitcoins type scams out there? Absolutely. Every area. Uh, why do, why do uh, the terrorists want to get paid in Bitcoin? You know, why do the drug, drug dealers want to get paid in Bitcoin? Why do the, uh, the uh, down in Mexico when they they kidnap uh, somebody and hold them for ransom. Why do they want Bitcoin? You know, why? Because they they uh, they can't be traced. Uh, the the uh, the way things are set up right now. That's why they're they're doing it. That's why the governments are tracking uh, cracking down. So what you want to do is you want to you have to go with people who are uh, Bitcoin companies, uh, the brokers that are under uh, regulation by the government. Now, Coinbase is based in San Francisco. It's re regulated by the U.S. government. They are inspected. Their books are inspected. Their books are audited by outside auditors, etc., etc., etc. You have how this next. They are required in the United States to follow our banking laws. The banking <coughs> laws is you must know the person who is in putting money in the bank. They won't allow a stranger. To put money in a bank, and they call a stranger is somebody that they don't know, have an identity. So you've got to have ID, birth certificates. Uh, you have to have uh, a job. That check from your job has to be de deposited in your bank. These are all identifying things of who you are as a person. They, they the Bitcoin companies have to do this. If you want to go and sign up for uh, do uh, on a Bitcoin company out of. Uh, uh, Russia or uh, uh, a uh, ru former Russian satellite and you want to sign up there you can sign up you can use any name you want any address you want any date birth date you want anything like that and so what happens they don't have they don't have that uh, the same criteria what they're, they're going to be forced to through circumstances to have that uh, same same criteria uh, behind them so take a look at that and uh, and, and, and look into that and try to open an account and buy a few uh, sh shares, put, you know, put $100 in something, Ethereum or something, and uh, uh, buy some Litecoin or uh, buy a portion of a, of a Bitcoin, just something so you have an account and you have a setup. Now they also have uh, debit cards. You can put Bitcoin on debit cards and we have thousands of new people that are signing up uh, monthly, new new uh, business signing up where they accept uh, Bitcoin and alternative currencies, and uh, for uh, in their in their businesses. 
the uh, uh, you know you can buy pizza using oh, you Bitcoin. Can. You can. You can buy pizza. <laughs> Ken, doesn't the creation of the Bitcoin and the others in the digital currency, on the one hand, they can trace whoever where the money is coming from, where the money is going. But at the same time, that does away with your privacy of what your account is because they know what money you have yes. and where your money is spent. Yes. <clears throat> so your privacy... They, 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 they can. Right now, it's a little bit difficult, but every coin has a history. Every coin has a history of who owned it. And if you sell it, that goes... Your, 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 your ownership of that is still re registered. And there's a new registered owner on it. And every owner that, everywhere it goes, it goes to a business and you buy a car. Everywhere that Bitcoin goes, there's a history of where that uh, all goes. That, that, uh, that ties with it. It can go all kinds of places. So that's, uh, that, that, that's what they like. And then, and then not, not, not just that history is recorded on tens of thousands of computers simultaneously. And then all those computers, not just record it, but they record, they report back that this is a valid transaction. They, 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 they valid, each of these computers validate that this is a valid transaction. So this is where everything's, banking's going this way, governments are going the way, new currencies are going this way. Uh, the thing I like about it is it gives us uh, a chance to, uh, to, uh, uh, Exit uh, the, the 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 federal government. Let's because this is what this is what the big thing is about. This is what the big thing is about. This is from Zero Hedge. The real reason to own Bitcoin. And I won't go through all of the. Um, I won't go through all of the. Um, the write up on this. I just want to go to a, a few things. This is from Simon Black, and uh, he says here. He says, banks have enjoyed unparalleled power and influence for eight centuries. Going all the way back to the Medici, uh, Medici, 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 Medici rule <laughs> in early Italian Renaissance. Bankers controlled the money and were uh, consequently able to control governments, laws, and even wars. In the fight against Napoleon in the early 1800s, for example, the fate of the British war effort was not in the hands of the generals and admirals, but in the hands of the Rothschild banking family that financed them. Uh, in the early 1900s, it was J.P. Morgan who engineered a revolution in Panama and imposed a puppet government so that his bank could finance the lucrative canal project. And just a decade ago, the heads of the top Wall Street banks cajoled the entire U.S. government into a trillion dollar taxpayer funded bailout. The only reason banks enjoy such immense power is because they control the money. But if you think about it, banks are nothing more than middlemen, taking money from depositors and loaning it out to borrowers. In fact, the old joke in banking was the famous 363 rule. Pay 3% on deposits, loan money at 6%, and be on the golf course by 3 p.m. Uh, the, uh, think about that. When you send money to someone, those funds move from your bank to the central bank to another bank, and then finally to the recipient's account. This is the same way that money used to be transferred 800 years ago, which seems almost tragically anachronistic, uh, anachronistic, anachronistic. <laughs> given that we have apps today to send funds directly to a recipient's mobile phone or email address. Why should anyone borrow money from a bank when there are so many peer-to-peer -peer and crowdfunding platforms available? Why pay exorbitant fees and commissions to exchange currency when there, when there are numerous websites that exchange money at almost no cost? Banks as financial intermediaries are about as quaint as taxi dispatchers in the age of Uber. Cryptocurrency and blockchain technology are the final nails in the coffin making it possible to hold your savings in the cloud rather than at a bank. And if that seems too esoteric, consider that your savings 
is already digital currency. Banks don't keep bricks of physical cash in their vaults. Your bank balance is nothing more than an accounting entry on your bank's electronic database. It just happens to be 100% controlled by your bank. They can gamble your savings away on some idiotic investment fad, charge you ridiculous fees without your consent, and even freeze you out of your own account for your own security, or deny you the right to withdraw funds. Cryptocurrency decentralizes this system. You become your own banker, no more middlemen. This is the principal reason to own cryptocurrency. This is what he's trying to do. We're trying, he's trying to break the enslavement of the American people and the world to the financial industry and the bankers. It's not about price speculation. Too many people are buying Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. to gamble on the price. This is totally misses the point. The idea isn't to trade paper money for Bitcoin, hoping to trade that Bitcoin back for more paper money later. It's the same with gold and silver. There are far less volatile ways to make money and enjoy a great a risk-adjusted return. Cryptocurrency is about divorcing yourself from the financial system that has never missed an opportunity to abuse you. And that makes it worth understanding. This is especially true if you're, if you're naturally skeptical of the idea or have already passed judgment on Bitcoin as a scam without having learned about it first. Cryptocurrency is the future of finance and just as embracing new technology can be prosperous for societies, it can be prosperous for individuals. And he says essentially, do you have a plan B when things go wrong? That's my, uh, my feelings. That's what uh, Simon Black says on it. Yes. Uh, this is Ken's story. I'd like to take a minute or two to uh, tell you about what our business and ministry is, investing with insight. Uh, what you are looking at is our, uh, our uh, website on uh, Facebook. We post here uh, uh, frequently. We have videos and all kinds of interesting articles, prophetic revelation. Uh, let's go over here and take a look at uh, our investingwithinsight.com website. This is where we, uh, we post a lot of our information, a lot of dreams and revelations are posted here. Uh, with people, for people. Uh, we see what the Lord is saying and we see how we might be able to invest and protect our families and our, our businesses at this time. Let's go over here to our, uh, this is our, uh, our website that we run on Kajabi. This is for our paying members only. And uh, uh, we have, uh, here we have, we post all of our videos, uh, uh, all of our, uh, our special reports, we have resources and watch lists and special reports, we have our meetings, we have prophetic revelation, we have our top picks of our top stocks, our penny stocks, this kind of thing that the Lord has shown us. And I want you to, to get an idea because as a member you'll get a, uh, you'll have a part of this. Let's go over here, let's say uh, you joined us. Well, every Saturday morning we have a um, uh, a presentation or online. We broadcast online. You can see here we got two days and 19 hours to go here before we do our next one. The um, uh, and we have a chat area over here on the right. You can see where people can chat and they can talk back and forth about what's going on. Be a part of the community. We have people around the world on um, on several different continents that are all a part of this on uh, Saturday mornings. Then. Uh, then what happens is we also have people who are traders. And so every, um, every week um, I provide, I mean every day, I provide a, a, a stock uh, list of where you can invest based on the, the, where the market is for this particular day, based on our prophetic stocks. As you can see right here, uh, I'm shorting the market. I'm sh the, the DUG, I'm shorting uh, energy, uh, the VIX, uh, I'm saying that there's going to be a lot of uh, volatility in the market, so the VIX will go up. I'm still in Apple. Uh, I'm shorting China. I'm going long U.S. Treasuries. I'm shorting gold, uh, uh, silver here, and I'm shorting gold mining companies here. So you can kind of see how we're doing. 
Right now we're averaging about 66% um, APR and we've been doing this for 631 days. So you can kind of see uh, trading days. Uh, over here we'll take a look at uh, some of our other resources that we have uh, that you would be available to you. We have, we have watch lists, special reports, uh, recommended tools and services, how to invest. We have training classes, 16 basic training class, plus we have an archive of all of our past re resources. There's a form that goes along with it as well. And then over here, uh, I'd like to, like to show you, uh, we have our tweets. Every day we have tweets going out. Uh, uh, we tweet out our, uh, our daily trading, plus uh, all my trades are tweeted out, uh, plus uh, any important articles or per important uh, prophetic revelation that's coming out, we tweet that out to everyone. And so, um, for instance, if you would um, like to uh, uh, to join up with us, what we have here is you just basically go to um, the store and uh, you can click on becoming a member. And we have, um, we have, it's normally $407 a year for an annual membership and you get essentially weekly meetings. Uh, we, we, we do skip once in a while. You can do $47 monthly membership or a $407 annual membership. And we have specials that we're running from time to time and you can take a look at those, those specials. So uh, basically uh, that's what we are, that's who we are. And uh, it's been great talking to you and we bless you. Hope you will join our prophetic investing community.